more Sorry Nation Street fans. Thank you very much for joining me for the Q&A and thank you in advance for the questions I'm about to answer that you sent in. I really appreciate your, uh, your involvement and uh, enthusiasm for this. So I'm going to give you my best today. Again, I apologise for the, uh, the shocking filter. But again, it's a little experiment. The Kevin one re worked really well. So uh, hopefully this one is identifiable. So I'm just going to get straight into the uh, the questions because um, I've heard me talk long enough already. Uh, this one is from, let's have a look. There it is. John Troy Trotter. What exactly is, that's a great name by the way, Kushti. Uh, what exactly is the thing about Ken's bowels? In real life, is he known for it or something? Okay, there's two questions here, so I'll give that first one. Uh, the Ken's bowel thing um, is basically because in the very first pilot episode when I was trying things out and experimenting, uh, there was a scene when uh, Tracy runs back to a house and um, Ken asks uh, to use his uh, lavatory. <laughs> Can I use your lavatory, Tracy? What? Shut up, Ken. That's not why we're here. We need a word inside. And that has followed on from a, a comment that some people still quote now, which which is bizarre for the amount of material I've put out. Um, in the first scene uh, of the Barlows, Ken says, I'm off to empty my bowels because I just needed a filler line. And I've got to empty my bowels. So I put those two lines together and thought, wouldn't it be funny if this was a constant issue for him? And uh, he was sort of oblivious to everything that was going on around him because of his own internal problems. So it was completely by accident, like a lot of the, the stories are. Um, and it was it was by chance. So Ken's bowels, as legendary as they've become, and I hope that God, Bill Roach never really finds out about this. Um, because Coronation Street legend, uh, he is some wonderful stories over the years of utmost respect, but it just made sense, and I'm glad it's made so many people laugh. And the second question from John is, uh, and Kevin, with his windowsill street art, very nice, is there a, a story behind that too? Uh, again, another one by chance. It was a filler line that I ran with, and I think I take a lot of my little stories that I, I try and create off the back of something I've already done and um, there was a scene I think I can't remember what episode it was it might have been uh, could have been nine or something like that and uh, I needed Sally to be shouting something in the background to fill the gap um, because I think she'd said Kevin your tea's ready or something something along those lines while Rosie and Chesney and all those guys were in the alleyway and I couldn't think of anything uh, other than something crude so I just said Kevin if I catch you banging out the window fucking hell it's me ma'am scissors to you and then I thought you know can I can I make rat work and then of course it's all about searching for scenes that, that suit it but yeah again totally by chance and uh, so glad so glad that I filled that get those gaps with those those uh, bits of dialogue because it worked really well put that there Okay, uh, so as you can see, uh, Ed Morris, big fan on Facebook, um, and obviously I imagine on here. Um, we know that Jim went to jail for killing Bossman, but will he be coming back in any future episodes? He certainly served longer than Tracy Love. So he has. Um, good question. Uh, I hated sending Jim to jail, but obviously the only crime on Sorry Nation Street is murder. Um, everything else is, is sort of, it's all right, really. No, nothing wrong with public indecency or burglary or uh, assault or anything like that. Obviously, you know, I'm not going to go too deep on that one. But basically, you can only go to jail and sorry, Nation Street for murder. Uh, Tracy Love got off very easily. You're quite right. Um, we went with the story that she was so insufferable they let her go. Um, I think Jim would be more at home in prison. So I know, and I know there's a few scenes of him in prison, so I'm, I'm contemplating whether to use those or not. Uh, but certainly you will see Jim again in the future. And I do keep referencing him in the Steve and Tracy story right now because I don't want uh, him to go to the back. Um, basically, I don't want him to get forgotten because he had quite an impact at the end of last year. So there we go, that one. Bopper. Another big fan of, of mine, now I sort of recognise these names as I go along, and I'm hoping that I'll recognise more. Um, 
always a good uh, always good support from from bopper how many times do you watch the original footage so that you can change it to suit the much better version um i i take I, I think you know my methods by now i don't take full episodes and read and dub them all um because i want to suit i want to create a story and i'll go onto my my methods and the effort that goes into it later on the more serious questions but um i tend to run through an episode pick scenes out and i drop it onto the timeline and i just leave it there and then there is a, a project a sorry nation street project and i'm left at the end of so i've completed an episode i'll be left with a bunch of clips that i plan on using just i need to put them in at the right time um, I do watch it over sometimes because I need to know where the next line's coming from um, and sometimes uh, I do end up chopping them. Uh, I will have a full scene in, in, in there and when I'm writing the script over the top of it I'll realise that the scene's probably, it doesn't need the last bit of it, it doesn't need the last line, it doesn't fit in. They could have had a serious conversation and then one of them will start laughing at the end of it or I don't want to laugh, we'll cut that out. So I do, I do have to read, I do have to watch the scene all the way through but sometimes um, it just takes once. I just, it's, it's better to do it spontaneously than to overthink it. Callum Byrne, 3692. Who is your favorite character in Curry history? Um, Rita, always has been Rita. Um, reason being, she just so, I, I think maybe now, like I said, the writers, the, I, I'm, I'm nowhere. Uh, I'm not shying away from the fact I don't like the writing today, and I think Rita has become sort of a parody, really, of herself now. Not for, through any fault of her own, they're just giving her a lot of very pantomime style lines. I don't think that's it suits her. She was very raw and real when she uh, she acts. Uh, she is raw and real when she acts. She's done um, two of my certainly one of my favourite storylines of all time which was the Alan Bradley one which is my earliest memory of, Car memory of Coronation Street was the uh, Alan Bradley abuse story and him getting hit by the tram amazing so I was four years old and I remember that I had no idea why I remember being sat in front of the TV on the floor playing with my toys and that being all and I was sort of transfixed by it even at four very very crazy how I can remember that but that's my favourite storyline and she was remarkable in it I thought some of the realest uh, grief scenes, the realest raw fear and terror. She she portrayed it so brilliantly. And over the years, she's always been a really powerful, sort of mesmerizing, powerful woman. You know, and, I, and I, I'm all for that. You know, I was a big Elsie Tanner fan. And Rita was a wonderful combatant to her. Ready for two pins? I'll drag you around this pub by that daft red wig. You're welcome to try, madam, any time. By hell, lady, I've met some hard-faced bitches in my time. But you take the bloody gold medal. And she's just carried it on. Um, very, uh, very strong character all the way through. Um, and always has a re very real sort of uh, cutting wit as well. So, yeah, big fan of Rita. There's a lot of close seconds. I love the Duckworths. Um, uh, again, like I said, I was a big Elsie fan. Um, but overall, she, she blankets. Coronation Street for me has been the, the best character and, I, and I, I like to think I use her in the alternative way respectfully and uh, and well So name this uh, okay, so this question has been asked by two people so I'll uh, like modi sort of modified versions of, of the same question. So death bunny 218 Do you know if anyone from the show has seen your works sort of art works of art? Thank you very much and uh, John Bilby actually asked the same question. Have you ever had comments from the actual stars of Corrie? Um, once, and that was this week, and I was absolutely over the moon by it. Yesterday, actually, um, I don't know when this is going out, but I uh, had a comment on Twitter from Kevin Kennedy, who played Curly Watts, who's not even been in my production, because I think he left in 2003, late 2003, perhaps, um, or four at the most. Uh, but he... He was very slightly featured in the Deirdre This Is Your Life, only slightly. Hey now. Oh, Kelly, what's it? It's what's all right. But he still said uh, that this was the, uh, the guilt, a guilty pleasure of his, which is what I want to see. I've always wanted Charlie Lawson, Jim McDonald, to, to see his scenes. I don't know whether he likes them. I try on Twitter to get him to, get him to, to look at them, but you know, 
I don't know whether he likes it or not. If he doesn't, great, right, fine. You know, it's not to everyone's taste. But uh, I think I was in David Platt. I think Jack P. Shepard would really like this if he ever got to see it. Um, but if anyone has any contacts out there that wants to uh, wants to show them, and uh, I, I would love that because even though some of it seems a bit derogatory, um, it's just a bit of fun, and uh, I'd like to think that they can see the fun side of it, which I'm pretty sure the majority of people being depicted would. Okay, so, Dmog 97 how many farts are usually in each episode? And Ken is the best, I piss myself just seeing him. Mm. I'd say three or four minimum, depending on how much of a bad time he's having. Uh, I, I think we had the one episode where he was in the hospital waiting room and I think there was about 27 in the space of one scene. God, the indignity of all this is too much. Jesus Christ. How can you stand there farting all over everyone? Can't help it. Can't they just get you in the theatre and get it over with? It's involuntary, I can assure you. But I tend not to overkill it. I actually noticed at the beginning in the earlier episodes he was complaining about those issues, but he wasn't actually doing it. Um, it was only like in the later episodes he started being more uh, <laughs> sounding off, so to speak. Did you hear that? I usually try and be a little bit more subtle about it. I don't try and put just completely cover the episode in them and every scene in them because otherwise it loses its humour. I think the timing of them is so, is so important. And there's been a couple of occasions where. Um, it's been a serious scene and people have been arguing and he's just interrupted the scene and ruined the moment. Nothing. Oh, that was poorly time. I fucking had enough Sorry. Of hang on, hang on. That's better. That's when it's funny. If I did it every two minutes um, all the time, it, I don't think it would be funny. So uh, I try and keep it to about three or four minimum, unless the scene calls for some serious, serious issues. And one thing about the Ken thing as well, which I'm trying to trying to get across and I hope it's getting across, is that he seems to react very badly uh, in that area uh, when he's wound up or angered or hurt or challenged in any way by anybody. And the whole Ina Sharples thing causing it back in the 70s. I might look into telling that story at some point now. She sort of broke his spirit and therefore his... Uh, system hissing syd9214 i guess hissing sid 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 with a y um how long does it take to learn capture the characters voices also do some characters take more time to rehearse before recording yes on the second question to, I, I i might answer other people's questions here as well but I don't, my impressions are loose impressions, they're not really accurate, other people do better ones than they, the, the guy, uh, the mechanic, the guy that does the Kevin Webster one that went on television, he, he is outstanding, um, he does a better Kevin Webster than me, all I try and do is I do a parody version of their voice, and if it sounds like them to you, and you can tell it's them, that's all that matters to me, I don't think I, I do anyone particularly really accurately, um, the Fred voice was something I'd done from a child, even before my voice broke. I was I was trying to do Fred. Um, again, it's not massively accurate, but it's you know it's him, and it's and it's sort of still you still get a laugh out of it. I, I never want to. There are some characters I just can't do, so I just do it. Like Gail, I I, I just do it. I, I raise the pitch and just talk softly and normally for her, and and that's good enough. Um, other people, I sort of do. I, I can really exaggerate. Ashley, voice is, is taking up three pitches. You, you see, you, I don't think comments like that help. Um, and and with him, as long as you can do a Manchester accent in the way he used to do it, and then you whack the pitch up, then it becomes really funny. I'm not saying it's an accurate voice, but it certainly sounds like Ashley, you know. So, um, and and alternatively with Fred, um, as long as you're down here. When you when you when you do the voice, as long as you're doing it from that part of your throat, it's always going to have that guttural, that 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 bizarre sort of booming tone he had. Um, and if you throw a lot of assay, assays in and everything, and you use a lot of northern uh, terminology and slang, 
you can't go wrong. So it does, it takes a bit of time. Some people I do try and sort of lock myself in a quiet room and just say a few words that they would say, dev particular tummy ages to at least get something palatable. Um, you know, so no, 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 and all that kind of stuff. He always says that sort of thing, my friend at the end of everything. So I do, I do have to practice and rehearse those kind of, of voices. Um, and I do, I do take time to rehearse. So it, the, there is there is a little rehearsal time just to make sure that I'm not doing it completely no justice at all. Okay, I've got uh, two similar questions here. Um, double whammy. James Friary, uh, how long does it take to voice over and edit? Are the people local to you that do the voices? And funnily enough, 12's my limit, 800 has actually asked, do you do all of the voices? I will answer both questions, yes. Um, I don't have a team. This is something I did as a hobby, you know, just as a bit of fun, because uh, I learned to edit and I wanted to try to put it to use. I wanted to have a laugh and it's mine. I don't bring anybody in to do to do the voices. I just sit there with the, once I've written the script, I sit there with a little voice recorder and I just talk into that. And um, that is, that's pretty much it. That's how I do it. Um, and I like that people think there's a few people to do it because that actually is a real compliment to me um, that, you, I, that I'm doing the work of what you would think would be a team. So yeah, I do all the voices. And how long does it take to voice over and edit? Um, it takes me longer to piece together the episode because I've got to find, go out there and search for clips and find ones that fit. Um, the Editing and the voiceover is the easy part. The hardest part is the piecing of the episode together and the writing of the script. Um, voiceover and edit probably takes about three days, maybe, if I if I really throw myself into it. Um, voiceover takes me half an hour. The edit will take me a couple of days. Um, if I drag, sometimes I drag it out over a week, depending on how busy I am, and I am quite busy. I've got a lot of projects on the go, I've got the channels that I'm, I'm trying to push. Um, but yeah, it, it, it takes a few days. Nice little question here from Liam Kyle. Uh, hi, sorry, Nation Street. Do you do the voiceovers? Answered that one, yes. Also, you have an impressive library of slang terms. I think the slang terms is basically from growing up. Uh, you, you hear your, your mum and your dad and your grandparents talking in, in a certain way and you pick it up and you talk like that yourself. I don't know how strong my northern accent is. I'm um, from Lancashire, so uh, I'm, I'm outside in Manchester, but I I picked up a lot of old school words um, when I was younger because more of them were used back then. And I certainly appreciate, I, I, I like that. That's those slang terms and the more traditional ones more than the the more obvious ones now the more sort of manufactured kids ones now today um which i think the the, the modern car uses a lot of um but again i guess you've got to go with the times so a lot of the the, the slang terms are just ones in, in my vault really um and certainly certain people use more than others like fred elliott uses a lot um betty people like that i try to put i try to give it a realism and um I try to make sure that the the older characters um, use those traditional terms. It keeps it alive as well. I think keeps the classic Cory element of it alive. Okay, all right. Phyllis Pierce, <laughs> question from Marco Negris. I think I've said that right. Phyllis Pierce is a custom made. It's custom made for this channel. Any chance of a Phyllis and Percy tribute episode? Right, okay. Uh, yes, I'd love to do that. Um, again, it's still the later era. I've not ventured into the 90s yet. I have some ideas on what I'd like to do with the 90s. Um, <laughs> Phyllis, I mean, I, I destroy my, my voice with Deirdre. And to some degree with Jack Duckworth as well. You know, because Deirdre's like so throaty like this. And then of course Jack's down here as well, so you know. So those those voices, I, I'm often coughing and spluttering and drinking water after I've done those scenes. Phyllis, on the other hand, is more breathy. So I think I've, I've got to work on that. I've never done that voice ever. So, uh, but I think yeah, there'll be Phyllis. Don't worry. Um, I have an idea to in, to do something with a, a bit of a backwards jump. 
and Vincent also wanted to know whether I was bringing back uh, Percy and Phyllis. So watch this space on that one. I certainly think it's going to be worth um, a time jump backwards just to involve that. And you've also asked, um, you, you like the Rosie and Jim one. Um, thank you. Uh, it was just a, that was just a, a bit of a play around one day. I was I wanted to do something different. Same with the Rainbow one I did, um, which has sort of become small scenes. I might do small scenes with Rosie and Jim instead of... Uh, Instead of full episodes, and they'll probably go on my Evil Zippy channel uh, because I don't want to clog up the Sorry Nation Street channel with too much non Sorry Nation Street material. So, if anybody wants to follow my other channels just to see some different content but very similar to Sorry, um, check out Cyril Biscuit, check out Evil Zippy. Uh, both channels um, I'm going to try and fill up with content and fill up with subscribers, hopefully. Good question from RB BL7BQ. From Wales. Uh, I'd like to know from a legal point of view if you have any problems with copyright or how you get around it. Do you have to pay a license fee, etc.? And no, but um, the copyright issue is the reason why I, I don't make anything from this channel. And I think that's something I always try and get across to people that have a real negative issue with. Um, my work I don't make anything from this I just do a lot of hard work really just for the sake of it for, for my own amusement and everybody else's um, there is copyright on every video because it's Coronation Street clips um, they're allowed thankfully uh, I had I'll go into de more detail on this bit later but obviously with the carry on film they, you just cannot show them on YouTube um, in the UK uh, which is a real shame because like if you do a full film and then you realize that no one can see it it can be really uh really demoralizing but i don't have a problem with the copyright in the sense that i don't have to fight to get it on there i don't i i obviously i'm worried about things happening to the channel uh because of that and i'm not a big fan of of the way copyright works i don't think it's fair that somebody can't be created with something that exists um, without having it blocked and banned, you know, because they're not, they, I don't see what it benefits uh, those who own the, the content if the person's not making any money. And I think that's why um, there's a few channels on, on, on Twitter I used to follow who did great creative voiceover content work just for comedy purposes and had it all blocked and banned. And that's sort of their hobby and their, and sort of what keeps them going day to day gets stopped by the people that don't even use the footage that's being um, creatively modified. You know, most most uh, channels now don't want to show classic Coronation Street. Everything's outdated now. You know, we don't, you, you know, we've moved on and all this kind of stuff. Well, if you've moved on, what does it matter if your archive stuff is being used? Um, you don't really care about it. Certainly the carry on films anyway. I mean, God, they're chopped and cut and people who are warned in case they get terribly offended by these harmless films so I don't see why they have to then come back and claim copyright on it when they quite clearly are more ashamed of it than anything so uh, yeah I, I, obviously there's legal reasons why you've got to do that and I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna contest it any further I just don't it leaves a bad taste in my mouth that um, people's work can be blocked and censored when uh, it does nobody any harm. Okay, this is this question from Thomas Clark Harris 9241. Um, this is probably the deepest I'm gonna get. Uh, were you originally Buggy Nation Street? No. Uh, absolutely not. Fabulous channel, fantastic uh, idea, fantastic work wonderful to see the, a parody of those classic characters and the reason i do this and this is this is this goes for the carry on film um, criticism um, i had on facebook it is only funny i mean obviously if you find it funny but it is only funny and impactful putting this kind of dialogue over characters you would never in a million years expect to hear saying it. If I parodied Coronation Street now, or any program now for that matter, and I put over all this effing and blinding and everything like that, 
it'd be like it would be dead because these characters were so charming and, and had such an aura and a presence about them and, and this goes for the carry-ons as well like Sid James and Kenneth Williams Charles Audrey and uh, hearing them speak like that is where the humour comes from that's why I found Dougie Nation Street to be so funny and so clever to hear Ernest Bishop saying I feel like God is shitting on me was one of the funniest things I'd ever heard um, and it was the, the charm of the characters which made it funny so I don't think uh, anybody that thinks it's disrespectful to those people or anything like that I think it's uh, certainly the carry-ons because they were so heavily innuendo and, and they were full of charm because it was so subtle um, and I, I'm almost I'm almost it's almost a protest to today it's like you know your characters today are so blunt and one-dimensional or unlikable that you can't you can't put anything over the top that has an impact whereas you put um, Re, uh, uh, Barbara Knox and you, you, you put a dialogue over saying you know stop being a whinging pun Norris people smile at that because it looks so unnatural so it's a tribute to that my point with the Bugger Nation Street thing is this and I have, I have I think there's one video left on, on YouTube which is an absolute crying shame because Bugger Nation Street was removed from YouTube and I, obviously I've got that same worry um, Somebody has put one video up, I think it's Albert Tatlock doing a, a comedy uh, monologue um, and he's voiced over it brilliantly as usual and there are a lot of comments underneath just absolutely slating Sorry Nation Street and it's bitter and needless and unnecessary It isn't my fault Bugger Nation Street was taken off I would have had it on forever in a day I watched nearly all of them I, it isn't my fault that your favourite programme, your, your, your favourite parody has been removed. Some people were saying, oh, I've watched Sorry Nation and it's not well thought out, it's shite and all this. And I was like, how can you say to me, you with your no videos, no subscribers, blank channel, tell me that I haven't thought something out that's taken me all week that's had me scouring the, uh, the, the, the net for clips, that's had me sitting there typing away, writing a full length script, that's had me voicing, that's had me editing and piecing together clips and, and, and trying to make it as funny as possible, trying to make it as, as, as um, good a production as I possibly can. Something that's taken me hours and hours and hours in a day and you come online with your no videos, no subscribers, no creative product whatsoever, no creative imagination of your own to create anything of your own and you tell me I've not thought it out. We all like different things. If you prefer Bugger Nation Street, fine, I, I completely understand that. But I created this because Bugger Nation Street was in a 70s time loop. It was stuck in the 70s. These characters could not leave the 70s. I decided that wouldn't it be great if you could see Jack and Vera, Sally and Kevin, Rita and Norris as a, as, a, as a duo. These characters, Fred Elliott, these characters needed to be parodied in the same way and I wanted to bring the modern equivalent of it. And there is nothing wrong with that. And some people have even gone as far as to say, I'm the reason why Bugger Nation Street's been taken off. You know, I hijacked it. How can I possibly, when you actually put a, a sane head on, how can I possibly have had a hand in something being removed from YouTube. I have nothing to do with Bugger Nation Street at all. I loved it. It was an inspiration to me. It wasn't the only inspiration. Actually, one of my, the bigger inspirations in Bugger Nation Street was Hugh Dennis on Mock the Week when he was voicing over Prince Philip and Prince Charles. That was one of the biggest ones. Um, I'd already started voicing over uh, Carry On Abroad. Um, when I'd, I'd watched like maybe half an episode of Bugger Nation Street. So I'd already had the ideas to do these things. Mine is not the same as Bugger Nation Street. It's not a copy because I'm, I'm, I'm not just taking like one episode and voicing right the way through. Because I, mean, I was always amazed at how he could keep the scenes going for so long with the, with the, the level of the quality of dialogue that uh, he created. Um, I'm piecing together bits to form a full episode. It's just a different way of doing it, but it's also, again, it's a different era. If they're stuck in the time loop of the 70s, am I not allowed to then go and do something with the, the 90s and the 2000s? 
I just think it's bitter, and I think a lot of people that that um, that angry that Bugger Nation Street's been taken down, so they want to slag my product off. Uh, and I do not understand anybody that comes onto my channel and likes just happened and says Bugger Nation Street better. How we we want Bugger Nation Street back? Don't come on my channel and say that. It's disrespectful. It's rude. Uh, you don't go onto onto somebody's channel and, and cry for a, a, another channel to, to come back or slate that channel because you like the other one more. You really need to get a life, maybe maybe kiss a girl, I don't know, or whatever you prefer, but don't criticise me and slate my channel and, and, and certainly slate my work and say that I don't, you know, I don't put effort into it or it's not thought out and it's it's um, not a patch on this and that and the other. I don't care if you don't like it, but that doesn't mean you've got to bring me down and my work down because you actually make yourselves look really bad. Sophia, Sophia, I really should have asked you what, uh, how to pronounce that, but big fan of mine and always, always on hand to comment. Uh, bought a mug recently as well, so thank you for that. When's your next Carry On remake coming out? <laughs> uh, well, it's a long-winded process. That's a lot of work. Uh, doing the whole movie, trying to keep it funny without really killing it because obviously Carry On was so wonderful with its innuendo. Um, again, it's just a parody based around the lack of subtle, subtlety in today's society. Uh, how, I mean, you've only got to watch a series on Netflix and you've got half an hour in and you've had about 10 Fs, probably an explicit bedroom scene and various other crass things that's sort of okay now but things that are, were perfectly harmless really and, and, and mischievous if anything in, in the carry-ons are, are demonized by everybody so subtlety has sort of gone in the bin so I thought well if that's what you if that's what's acceptable now look what it looks like over the top of these charming characters from from years gone by and see how unsubtle that is uh, and it might actually make you realise that today is very crass and probably not uh, the improvement everyone thinks it is. Um, I get a lot of criticism on Facebook about carry-ons. Uh, I, I took the comments off for non-followers because I just get people coming on going, um, you can't do this to the original. You get a 2 out of 10 effort from, from me, like I care, you know. <laughs> I, I tell a lie, I do care, but it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lose sleep over some random guy with a Ukrainian flag on his on his profile picture telling me he gives me a 2 out of 10, you know. But at the same time, I was getting a lot of the same comments about taking the original and ruining it. It's like, you haven't read the description of the video, you've just turned it on for 10 seconds and then gone on and threw in your... Uh, your big complaint which you can sort of go and jack off over later so um i'm very wary about putting the carry-ons out i know i can't get them out on youtube um i can't even get them out on vimeo now so it's going to have to be daily motion or, or straight facebook upload if you want to see carry on abroad please uh, if you don't follow the facebook page try and see if you can follow it because there is a full episode for a full film on there i will try and make another carry on remake um, I started Carry On Matron, and it's pretty good. Um, I, I feel like I should have done a historical one. I would have liked to have done Carry On Henry. That would be my ultimate one, because I think I could do a lot with that. But watch this space. I, I sort of do them in bits all the time. And will you be getting the, pay, the Patreon as you deserve revenue? It's just, I don't have enough subscribers for Patreon. If I was on hundreds of thousands of subscribers, I would get a Patreon. I can try... But I doubt they would, I would make much of it. I think, you know, I've sold a little bit of merchandise for, I think, a pint of beer's worth of profit. Um, and to be honest, I mean, I did put out a little the feelers a while ago saying, you know, because I see people who run channels on Twitter and things like that, and they, they get people to buy them a coffee and stuff. I got some feedback, but it was like, I think three people said yes, maybe. I just don't I don't know if it's worth it at the moment. Maybe I have to grow it a bit bigger and just and hope that maybe my other channels can uh, can take off as well. Because if they take off, there's no copyright involved in Cyril Biscuit, um, and he, it's a similar humour, just all angry Wigan and bloody hell fire all that sort of stuff. Now now see, I'm not too happy with all this bloody weaponry. 
you've got guns all over its shop, then over there you've got bulletproof vests. If this were a vacuum shop, would you sell bags of dust? So excited. Get out of fucking way. They like horse shit, this lot. They're always in road. Another one of the original boys, 20 Rothmans, asked me a question on the original Q&A, I think, uh, as did a few of you. Um, you must have an insane workload. I'd, <laughs> I'd hate to see what you'd do to keep it up appearances um, when your curry episodes run out. Well, that's to suggest that they run out. I mean, there's so much material. Um, and especially when you're piecing it together from different time periods. I mean, this could go on forever if I wanted it to. Um, keeping up appearances. <laughs> How do you dub over Patricia Routledge in a, in a way that makes, makes it funnier than she was? I think you can because she was so... In fact, actually, no, I, I, thinking about that on the spot now, she was so well-to-do and wanted to be the the snob of the neighbourhood. and the, Well, she, she didn't want to be the snob. She was a snob of the neighbourhood. She wanted to be the lady of the neighbourhood. She wanted to be upper class. She didn't want um, to, to be seen as Mrs Bucket. And I think the last thing she would do would be use coarse language because that would, that would be shocking. That would be disgraceful. Um, and it would put her down to Onslow and, and Daisy's level. So perhaps that might be worth looking at. Uh, I, I don't know how I'd reword the title, but certainly I, I'd try it. I think I think I'd have to get a voice somewhat right. But you're giving me an idea there. It's in the it's in the works. Now it is anyway. Thank you for for throwing the throwing a spanner in my works and making me rethink. Thank you, Twenty Rothmans. I will I will certainly have a goal at keeping up appearances. Let's try and. YS Goal 3, another old school fan of, of the channel. Oh, we've got quite a lot here. Favourite of all your, for want of a better phrase, invented character quirks. Mine is definitely Kevin, his ejaculatory habits. Um, probably that. Probably that because it's made a lot of people laugh and it, it was so random and with Kev being so angry all the time every time he speaks he shouts you know it's almost like there's a scene where in the original it will be like morning Kevin yeah morning but in mine it's like morning Kevin morning you know he's, he's got to like everything's so aggressive so you can imagine him like giddy as hell and, and, and needing to go and relieve himself so boom out the top window so yeah probably kevin's is, is mine although i do the, the ken issue is just so fun to do um over time i'm trying to create new ones in people like not people want me to bring the norris in back you never know i'm thinking i keep mentioning it if you've noticed in the last couple of episodes um but i want to explore different parts of him as well because there's only so many youth people he can kill off and then he just he's getting away with murder and nobody else does um, but I can do more with certain characters I'm creeping certain things into certain characters Dev you know now he's got rid of the jungle he's son of an absolute man whore um, don't know where I'll take that but I just sort of I do it as I go along I've no long term plan for any of these characters everything is done on the fly and I, I'm, I'm I'm amazed when I think about that sometimes. Uh, could you use some more flashbacks in the future? I'd love, for example, Albert Tatlock to pop up in a Kenneth dream sequence, possibly accompanied by one or both of Ken's pre-dinnery wives swearing at him. Such dream sequences give you so much potential, what do you think? Yes, I do. Um, again, I don't want to step too much on the tolls of Bugger Nation Street. I mean, you know, I upset people just existing. Uh, but... I, t I tend to keep the 70s stuff to a minimum just because I don't want to be, I don't want to be, I don't, th that was done very well somewhere else. Um, but I do throw something in it every now and again because of its impact on my my era. So Ida Sharple's causing Ken's bowel issues by just breaking him down, you know, and uh, making him feel um, inferior. I threw a quick scene in with that once. Uh, I did a couple of flashback scenes with, uh, I think I did one with Vera hitting the kid in the in the, the corner shop uh, during the lorry crash. I want a sabonic corner shop myself. Go on, fuck off back to your dodgy mother. 
Hey, you can give her this. Oh, you. Just try it. Next one, I'll put your teeth out. I'll be back for you, big bird. No danger. The fuck were they about? Can't him on pinch, thieving little twat. So, I do. I, I will throw some flashbacks in. I think Albert. Uh, I did. I did the Albert. This is your life, just because I really wanted to voice Captain Man uh, uh, Arthur Law, uh, and I wanted to give Albert a go as well. My first drink of it, I soiled my trousers completely from top to bottom. And when that happened, Sorry Nation Street Council offered me a house. Dude, fresh wheat. And I, I didn't want to step on the toes again, but I, I thought I'd give it a try. Maybe Albert could be uh, instrumental in a, in a Ken-themed episode. I think his ex-wives would be would be quite funny to explore. Um, particularly Valerie in the sixties, you know, with some black and white footage would be nice. So yeah, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a thought. Yeah. Uh, one more. Hatrick of questions. Which voice were you most pleased and amused to find? My bet is Sally. They're all fantastic, of course. Um, to find, I'm presuming you mean sort of didn't realise I could do it or or, or didn't realise it. I could sound a bit like that person. It just sort of happened. Uh, Sally, I don't really sound like Sally. I just got, I just turned O's into O's and it becomes a palatable Sally. I quite liked doing the Cockney accent of Bradley Walsh because I've never had a, a real chance. I'm not very good at the Southern accent, but I, I find it easy with him because he's quite direct and you know to the point. I think the more aggressive you are, the easier that voice is. Um, I'm trying to think of anything that's actually come across as being easier. Uh, I suppose you could say somebody like usually the characters like Tyrone or Steve McDonald or Jason. You, you you change it slightly, but it's more or less the same voice. I can't really do Tyrone, but I know that he I know he has a man character and everything. And uh, you know, oh, cheers, Vader. But that's not not too dissimilar if you if you make it dusky, uh, like sort of husky and breathy. At least your mum lets me in the house. Yeah, that could be a bunch of people. Usually Jason Grimshaw's like that. It's like uh, 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 when he talks. Or no offense, but you know he is. And uh, and, and Steve McDonald, you do the same voice. But he again, he's a bit like Sally. It's not a no, it's a no. It's just a, a very unusual way he speaks. And obviously, if you put flipping in, but you, you hang on the P's. Flipping. He always says that all the time. So I put that in every now and again, and it's just it's good enough to be that character. So I think those characters, it's just nice to know that I can do it. I can do them a little bit of justice. So I, I would think those side characters probably are the ones. Um, because everyone else that I really try and emphasize, but those ones I just want to want to sound a little bit like them, and that's good enough. Sally B, sixteen eighty nine. A um, couple of questions actually. I'm a massive fan of your channel. Who's your favorite Sorry Nation Street resident, and why? So my favorite Sorry Nation Street, not the Curry character in history. Um, I'm. Early days, I would have said I love doing Fred and, and, and guys like that, but I, Blanche is just a joy to do. She has so much to say, and, and, and her character itself was wonderful. I mean, there were times when I wish I wasn't voicing over it. There was a great scene the other week where um, Rita said that uh, she couldn't go to church because God wouldn't have approved of her life, and Blanche said, Well, he used to hang around with thieves and prostitutes and it was just brilliant and I didn't want to voice over it but I, obviously I had to but she is she's just brilliant because you can when I put my voice over the top and I put the dialogue over the top that I give her you can imagine her saying it because she's so acid tongued and so and so aggressive so I would definitely think that Blanche has become my favourite and I think as well that's I, I seem to enjoy doing the Barlow scenes so much more because there's almost a desperate misery attached to the family like Deidre looks just fed up with everything in every episode um Ken obviously is in complete turmoil Blanche sort of rules that house really and uh, and is makes it worse than it already is and Tracy's a total car crash so it, it's I probably enjoy the Barlow scenes more than more than anything but yeah Blanche is Blanche takes the cake there are a few close 
but I, I just love I love Blanche. And the second question from Sally B is, will you be bringing one-off plot legends such as Wendy Crozier and Maurice, uh, Maurice, uh, Maurice Hutchwright into the storylines at all? Wendy Crozier would be great. I mentioned her a couple of times actually in, in the show, I think in the first, first episode and one recently. Well, I can always shut my eyes and think of Wendy Crozier. Maybe I'll bring her back. Maybe there's there's a something she can do to <laughs> to help Ken. Uh, she's she's a miracle worker if there is, but you never know. So it, it's worth worth a, worth a try. The only problem I've got with um, Ian McKellen's character is that I actually used all his scenes in the, when Elsie was doing the speech to them all about going and over to the Rovers and sorting Becky out. She was talking to the whole group, and the whole group is the book club. And it's actually Mel Hutchwright that's that's doing the um, doing the speech to them, so I feel like I've been reusing material there. So I'm a little bit, I'm not sure. I might bring him in, but I've, it's a long way down the line yet. Though. Rich Morris, it would be good to know just a bit more about yourself. A personal question. Uh, well, there is. Not a whole lot to tell. Um, I'm a very creative person. Uh, I like to to toy with editing and things like that. Um, I, get, I get into a habit after a while, like when I'm playing computer games and things like that. I've got to record everything, you know, so I can play with it. Uh, so that's sort of you know, that's my creative. Uh, there is no ceiling in my creative. Um, I'm very sort of. I care a lot about things I'm interested in I think that's something that's lacking I think nowadays is not enough passion uh, in anything like you know if I'm a football fan um, I'm a real like a proper supporter uh, whereas I think most people nowadays is just casually uh, the more bothered about the fantasy teams and the betting I think it all comes down to money again um, I'm a very passionate person about the things I enjoy uh, I do struggle with um, uh, depression anxiety so a lot of my creation of Sorry Nation Street was based around trying to keep my mind active and also just trying to um, provide something for uh, a relief for anybody else in in uh, that similar situation. And I got that. Um, I, I was told that it was a big help to a lot of people. So that's certainly over lockdown. So that was nice. Um, I'm always battling that. Um, I'm getting a lot, lot better. Uh, life's got better recently. So. Um, yeah, there's that. Uh, I'm a, a, a father as well, so uh, I try and <laughs> I try not to use this as the example in my parenting. But um, yeah, there's there's not a whole lot to tell. But um, I certainly never try to be to be boring or featureless in any way. Um, there's always got to be something going on, something happening, something in the mind uh, that's uh, being prepared for uh, release. And that's why I'm trying to create so many, um, so many channels as well, just to, to keep um, in, t in touch with different people and bring in um, new interactions for my life. Those are the questions I have at the moment. Um, if there are any I haven't answered and I've missed, please say so in the comments and I will come back and do a bonus clip um, answering them. Uh, I'd, I've been a bit, my head's been a bit all over the place this week. But I've got that. Those were the ones I had laid out for me. Apologies for the rant <coughs> regarding Bugger Nation Street, but I just I I am I'm getting tired of, of being sort of uh, having my work criticised just for no reason. You know, um, I don't try and be anybody else. I just try and make people laugh. If it doesn't make you laugh, just don't watch. Just move on. Skip through the reel skip through the videos, just ignore the videos, block them, whatever. If it really hurts you that much to see my material online, you're not being bombarded by my material, it's just there and Bugger Nation Street isn't. Um, if you don't like the alternative and you'd rather see a 70s um, version, obviously I don't want to redo that because I'm just going to open myself up to more criticism. So uh, if you either like the 90s and the 2000s stuff or you don't, um, that's that's the best I can say. You know, during lockdown, I did this to make sure that I kept myself sane and maybe made a few people smile. If doing that is something that leads to you being really pissed off, then you've got to ask yourself some questions. I'm, I'm literally just doing this 
because I've had a, a life of doing mediocre, dull jobs for 18 years now and this is the first time I've ever got to do anything creative and I think I'm happier doing this now than I have been the previous so many years so I think that's all that matters to me and if I've made a lot of people smile then I've, I've done my job uh, so I just thank you to everyone that asked a question like I said if I haven't answered it let me know I'll come back and do a bonus video for you um, keep subscribing keep watching keep commenting I love your quote comments and uh, when you when you talk underneath about lines I've written it makes me feel really good keep sharing do give Cyril a go because um, if you like angry no-nonsense foul-mouthed northerners he's as good as it gets now I've actually created a drawn hand-drawn cartoons of him to, to try and use him a bit more I'd love to see him as a late-night cartoon like Beavis and Butthead and uh, South Park used to be but it might be asking a bit much but that would be a dream job please try and push him as well and please keep enjoying the videos and I will be back to you with um, episode 41 as soon as I possibly can thank you very much and uh, keep following the filth Thank <laughs> you.